תקילים ושיעור לעילוי נשמת דבורה פייגה בת שמואל, אין לעילוי נשמת אורה דבורה בת שמואל. פה רפואה שלמה, very soon to אשר בן מלכה. המון כל חולי עם ישראל, בעזרת השם, אין בשורות טובות. Just a very quick halakha that uh, I didn't mention inside, and it's interesting to know. Like, uh, like we just discussed, this Friday, according to the Sephardim, it's permissible to eat meat without any problem. Even though the Arizal himself used to say that it's not good to eat meat on the day of Rosh Chodesh Av, his student, Rabbi Chaim Vital, didn't agree with his, uh, with his master. And he said that it's permissible to eat uh, meat, and that's why we follow those uh, and these halachot. Ashkenazim, no. However, what about next Shabbat? There is your wife is preparing the food for Shabbat, and she wants to taste, you know, to know if it's uh, tasty or not. She's allowed to taste from the meat of Shabbat that she's preparing or whatever. Or oh, there are many people that are doing humrot. I love this humrot. They do to'amea chaim zachu, ve'gama wa'avea, they sit down before Shabbat and you know they open up a table, they eat to taste the food of Shabbat. Even though the Alakha writes that it's good to taste the food of Shabbat and it's a mitzvah, yeah, obviously not to exaggerate. But the question is, it's permissible next Friday to taste and to taste the food and to eat the food of Shabbat even though it's meat or not? The Alakha writes, it is permissible. If there is a need, because it's the Tzorek Shabbat, to know if there is something that is missing, a little bit of salt, a little bit of, uh, I don't know, uh, to, to cook it better. So, because it's the Tzorek Shabbat, it's permissible to do it. We also mentioned, we also mentioned that Motzei Shabbat, this coming up Motzei Shabbat, is also permissible to eat for Melave Malka, the leftovers of Shabbat. So if you have some uh, meat left over, it's mutar to eat it on Melave Malka. But more than Melave Malka, Sunday, Monday, even though you have fixed every Sunday to eat the leftovers of Shabbat, not recommended uh, for, for this coming up week. Your kids, it's permissible. But for you, for your wife, not to eat meat throughout the whole next week. Obviously, the ones that are not eating, the ones that are not fasting, I'm sorry, on Tisha B'Av, also, even though they're allowed to eat, they're not allowed to eat meat, and they're not allowed to eat things that are very uh, pleasant and, and pleasantable, but regular food to maintain themselves for the tiny. Rabotai, we're coming up to the last two parashiyot of the book of Bamidbar. It's called Shabbat Hazak. We're finishing up the whole book. The last parasha speaks about this is the travel, the way that Bnei Israel traveled throughout the desert. The, how you call it? Journey, thank you. The journey. How many times, the Torah writes, how many times they stop in the desert throughout the 40 years? The Torah is telling us 42 times. Comes the Arizal and he says something unbelievable. See the Arizal, I want to understand what is all this parasha have to do with me. The Torah is not a book of history. What is exactly the connection in between? Who cares about the, 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 the stuff that they had? There are many answers. First answer is the Arizal. The Arizal writes, every single Jew, until Mashiach's arrival, in his life, until he will pass away to Olam Abba, is he will have 42 different stages, 42 different stops in his life. Some stops are amazing, some stops are more difficult, but there is no Jew that can say on himself, my life is smooth. No such thing. Every single Jew has ups and downs, ups and downs. 42 is the maximum. That's what that is, all right. But there is, let's give it a little bit more of flavor for, uh, to this Arizan. Chachamim are teaching us that all these 42 stops was to make stronger the emunah of Am Yisrael. Remember, Am Yisrael left Egypt. They were in how many levels of Tum'ah? 49, 49 level, levels of Tum'ah. Every single stop was to make the Jew stronger and to break one of the bad midot that he acquired in Mitzrayim. 
And he said that this concept have to be only when there is emuna. You know that he was a rabbi, that uh, he was in the back then in the horse with his uh, student. The student was also a great tzaddik, and they were in the horse traveling from one city to another, and uh, and the man that was that was uh, uh, driving the the carriage, yeah, he was driving like a wild uh, guy, you know, uh, running and jumping and all the way. It wasn't a regular, you know. USA uh, roads. What's was uh, South America's ones, yeah, if, if you have been. Yeah, ups and downs and uh, curves and all. Not easy. The student gets so uh, stressed, he started to pray. But help me. Finally, they finish up all the ups and downs. When they finish, the student, you know, he was able to breathe. Ah, Baruch Hashem. I am alive. Thank you, Borei Olam. He just said, thank you, Borei Olam. The driver made a, a turn and the whole entire carriage, yalla, into the floor. Student, look at this rabbi. He says, how come? I was praying and praying. Borei Olam, help me. When I'm thinking, that's, a, that, that's what I get? And the rabbi answered to him. He told him, listen. When... When the man was wild, you were praying. You trusted on Akadosh Baruch Hu that he is the one that can save you. No one else besides him. At the moment that you thought that it's all right, it's okay, it's done, it's finished, you started to trust in the horse and the driver. Say, Akadosh Baruch Hu, also when things are going well, you have to trust in me. There was a, they went to Rabbi Shteyman and Rabbi Shalom once, and they told him, Rabbi, we want to go to Ma'anat HaMachpelah. To Hebron. The rabbi said, Oh, Hebron, it's, you know, it's dangerous. I don't know, especially at that time, he was uh, more dangerous. Yeah, a lot of Arabs, and he's dangerous. He said, Ah, rabbi, there is uh, a lot of soldiers. What's the problem? Say, the rabbi, now you cannot go. Now you cannot go. So why not? He says, Listen, if you trust in the soldiers and in their guns, and you're not trusting on Akados Baruch Hu, there is no security. If Hashem lo yishmor ir, shav shakat shomer. If Borei Olam is not going to keep the city, no one can keep it. You can have the best army and the best uh, weapons and all the best planes. Yeah, you remember a few, few years ago when all the Hashemam, they were uh, stabbing the people in Jerusalem all over. And uh, people were talking, we have one of the best armies in Israel. And they cannot control those guys, you know, killing up in the middle of the city. If Hashem doesn't want to keep us, no one, no one can protect us. That's one concept of this parasha. Number one, emuna. Whatever your stops are throughout the life, you have to connect it with emuna. But there is another, uh, another point, beautiful point. Rabotai, all of those stops that Am Yisrael had, like I mentioned, some of them were amazing stops, Har Sinai, right? Great stops when they got the Torah and everything. There were other, other stops that they had, Parv, nothing special. Uh, uh, which stops uh, the, the Torah is mentioning? Uh, El Ale, yeah? Uh, no, nothing special. By the way, just, uh, I, I forgot to tell you, Allahically, from this parasha we we'll learn a very interesting halakha. The Torah is telling us all the 42 stops, correct? Why I have to know all the 42 stops? And it's going by names that we, know, we don't even know exactly where, where they are. But the halakha writes that thanks to these stops that, that the Torah is mentioning, we can know how not to go against what the Torah wrote. Don't go back to Egypt. There is an isur to go back from the same path that Am Israel went out from Egypt. Ramah Yosef was the chief rabbi in, in, uh, in Egypt, correct? How, how it's possible? You're not allowed to go to, to Egypt. We have a lot of people in our community as well. When they came out from Egypt, the answer is, they're allowed to go to Egypt when you're not going exactly throughout the same path that Am Israel went when they came out. Yeah? In that path, you're not allowed to go. 
And that's why it's important to know this is in, in the Allahic concept. But Rabutai, we have some stuffs that were amazing stuffs. All the stuffs, parv. And we have stuffs that were terrible. Terrible. Like what? Kibrot ta'ava, when they desired. Hatserot, when there was machloket in between Korach and, and, and his people. We had terrible stuffs. Say Ba'alea Musa Rabutai, each one of us in our lives, we have moments of glory and we have moments that we deep down. The, the Mikhtam and Yao calls it Yeme Ahava and Yeme Sin'a. Days of love and days of hate. Days that you're trying to do stuff and nothing is going well. And days that you, you know, by mistake, you tell, well, it's going great, right? Or not only material things, spiritual. You feel much more connected to Bore Olam. Your prayers are so easy to say it. When you learn, you understand. And there are other days you open up the Gemara, the, the book, whatever, and you're breaking your head. Not even one line you're able to do. Say, Chachmah Musar. That's exactly the point. You can have ups and downs. You can have days that you're doing a lot of mitzvot and bar minan days that we can do averot. But there is one thing that we cannot forget. It doesn't matter what you did. It doesn't matter which stop you're holding now. Continue going. Never stop. Never give up. Don't say, ah, you know, I fell. You know, I'm not able to do it. Say, Chachamim, no. There is 42 stops and you have to go and continue walking, continue going to your goal. And even when you fall, it's Ritzon Hashem what you did. Chachamim are saying, the same way that a person, Borei Olam is helping him, you know, to get closer, even the Averot that a person does, somehow is Ritzon Hashem as well. Borei Olam is putting those problems and those situations for you to help you out afterwards to go uh, even higher. There is uh, the famous story of the Gemara. Let's get over. Famous story of the Gemara. All of us, we know the story. Rabbi Akiva, you remember the story with Rabbi Akiva before... Oh, it's working? Thank you. You remember the story of Rabbi Akiva that he was about to... Uh, no, it's over. Yeah. Rabbi Akiva was walking next to the Beit HaMikdash. You remember that story with, uh, with uh, a lot of rabbis? And they see how from the Beit HaMikdash there is a shual. How is the shual in English? A fox coming out from Beit Kodesh HaKodeshim. Everybody cries and he's happy. So what he says, oh, you know why I'm happy? Because if the Nevoah, the prophecy of destroying the Beit HaMikdash happened, I know that also the name of Zechariah will happen, that all the Shavuot, Zechariah, 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 the Mephashim are asking a simple question, I don't understand. What are you talking about? That's a reason to laugh now? So you have good hope. That's a reason to be happy. Listen up, the answer. You know, according to the Allah, the Gemara writes down, that any Navi, a prophet wasn't able, thank you so much, wasn't able to get prophecy if he was sad. A prophet can only get prophecies if he's happy. Now I have a question. Now we're coming up to Tisha B'Av. And there is a whole book of prophecies of Irmiyahu and Abi. Very tough prophecies. Mitzafon Tipatah and all the terrible prophecies that, how come that Irmiyahu is getting prophecies? He's sad, right? He's supposed to be sad. And Irmiyahu is crying and he's also, and he's also mourning. How come the Borei Olam is talking to a person that is, that, that is sad? You know what's the answer? av From the moment that the month of Av, like today, starts, we have to go and to, uh, to low up the, the, the happiness. Not to break it up. Not to erase it. Happiness have to remain in each one of us. You're going to tell me, yes, Rabbi, it's very nice what you say. But how you do it? 
How when a person sees terrible things, a person can be happy? The answer is, look at the parasha of this week. The parasha of this week is teaching us that I'm Israel have moments of happiness and moments of punishment. How many people died in the desert? All the generation that died. But all what happened was part of the plan of Borei Olam to make us closer and attach more to, to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. When a person understands that every single step in his life, even the not so good ones, are part of the plan to make me closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and to be able to reach to Olam Abba, then I have to be happy. That's the happiness. At the end of the day, I'm getting closer and thanks to all this situation, I'm going to reach to the final goal. So yes, there are moments of sadness, moments of happiness, moments that are part. But don't forget to continue walking. Throughout our path, to have the emunah on HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and Be'ezat Hashem Borei Olam will give to all of us Berechayin HaTzlecha B'chol Ma'asiyah Adenu. Amen ve'amen. Rabbi Yachan Yavin HaGashiyah Omer Atzah HaKadosh Baruch Hu Lezakot Yisrael.